I'm sure there's some topic of the, the cluster area that I won't cover. So I, I'm hoping, and I don't think it'll take the full time. So if people have questions, I mean, it would be great to, to ask in front of everyone. Uh, so there is someone here that is analyzing 7 gigabits. Actually, there's multiple people analyzing 7 gigabits per second of traffic with Bro. <laughs> you know who you are. So Bro can look at lots and lots of traffic. So Bro is single-threaded. I actually got, I don't want to say criticized. It was pointed out that in, uh, it, it sounded like a really negative statement because I was writing the cluster documentation. And I started out by saying, Bro is single-threaded. It sounds sort of negative, but it's not really. It's, it's just a statement of fact. It is single-threaded. You actually said Bro is not multi-threaded. Oh, OK. <laughs> Something like that. Bro is not multi-threaded. Bro is single-threaded. Maybe I'll, I'll change it. That, that is a good point. I should, make, I should change that and make that distinction. And the way it is, it, it's, an, it's an old code base. It, it turns out, and Robin tried, it would, it's very hard to adapt multi-threading into the code base as it is. Um, it, it, it just, he, if you have more questions, talk to Robin. He has a lot more to comment on about that, I'm sure. But we're sort of ignoring that. Uh, conceptually, though, it's the, the task that it's trying to accomplish is extremely parallelizable, even from the standpoint that you know, there's clusters. I mean, it's obviously the, the job is, is sort of lends itself towards parallelization. But we're not really going with the brute force approach. And Robin will talk about that. He's working on stuff that I don't fully understand yet. But that's, he'll talk about that later. Um, the, the background of the cluster was it was this paper originally sort of you know, pondering if it was possible to, to, to do, accomplish this cluster thing. Because at that point, there weren't people running these enormous clusters of Bro because it didn't even exist. And everyone would just run one process. And the only thing you could do was make Bro do less to make it cope with your traffic. And it was originally just written, I believe, as a set of bro scripts that would do the communications and talk to each other and synchronize some data around. And, and a, lot, a lot of the guys at Ixie just sort of worked on various bits and pieces of it. Uh, and then Robin wrote this thing called the cluster shell a long time ago because he recognized that we needed something to maintain 10 processes, 20 processes, something like that. Because who wants to do that across three boxes by hand? I mean, you're not going to want to be like, start up, start up, start up. It's, it's just unmaintainable. So he started running this thing. And my brain got so used to typing cluster to work with bro that it got really confusing when it got renamed to bro control. And now it's bro control. And what actually happened was for 2.0, the notion of the cluster has now been ripped out of it. And it's, it's in bro itself now. And bro control just controls the cluster framework and turns it on and tells these bros how to connect to each other. It's actually funny when you word it that way. So it's sort of 2.0 is, is abstracting a lot of that previous work and sort of you know, operationally t taking cues from operational deployment of these and learning how it gets used and how it needs to be extended and things. The base concept, it's just a bunch of bro processes working as a single entity to sort of accomplish this goal of detecting things and logging things. Um, the, right now, and this may change in the future, but right now, the functionality is split across three types of nodes, workers, the man workers manager, and proxies. Um, and now I will go into talking about those, because there's so much confusion about the terminology. And I've gotten so many questions where it's, it's really um, someone asking about why something does something, and it turns out it doesn't even do that. The manager right now really has two tasks. It receives logs, and it handles notices. So if you do anything like send email or, or you send email or you go to block something, it's all going to be done by this one manager host. And in the future, we may have multiple manager hosts. But right now, there's one. It also does a thing where it receives logs. So you split your traffic. You, know, you do this load balancing. You split your traffic up into lots of little streams of, pa uh, streams, of streams. And you don't want to have, four, if you're running 40 processes, who wants to have 40 HTTP logs? So in the Bro Communications Protocol, 
we actually enable remote logging. So what happens is whenever anything goes to log, it says, I'm going to log. And the logging framework says, not here, you're not. And it sends it to the manager. And the manager, just as these come in, writes them to disk or sends them out to the different output plugins, however uh, you've configured it to do it. And, and I guess I should say, most of the intricacies of that are just sort of handled automatically now. If you do your notice policy, it, it, it is actually turned off on the workers and only runs on the manager. Um, and the logging, just if you do a cluster, it just bro control turns everything on and enables the cluster framework correctly. The proxy, this is where most of the confusion, and maybe there's a better word we could use for this even. Um, it synchronizes limited state information across workers. The software stuff that we were just talking about is synchronized across all the workers. Worker 12 <coughs> sees that some host is running Internet Explorer. It tells everything else. So everything knows that that host is running Internet Explorer. So it's not gonna, they're not going to try and log it again. They actually do it by, uh, say you have one proxy in your cluster and eight workers. You don't want to have like this complete mesh where each worker connects to each worker with the communications protocol and like just blasting these messages in this, this horrible mess. So they all just connect to a proxy. And whenever they say, hey, everyone else needs to know this data, they send it to the proxy. And then the proxy goes, all right, and it sends it down to all of its other workers. So it's just sort of a, an optimization mechanism. And the, the, the function and behavior of how you do work with proxies may change in the future once we get a little more experience with them. And, and active local IP addresses. There's a uh, known hosts script that you may see if you, in, if you configure your local networks. Uh, and, that, and, and you load local.bro. And that's going to be you know, hosts that have established a TCP connection, essentially, or, or you know, had an, one come in and be established. So it just sort of gives you a list of all the ones. But you want to know, every, you want everything to know what IP addresses have been active so they share that data. So that it's, it's really, this is what kind of leads the cluster to having that cohesive feeling where data can be known across the cluster, even if it's only seen at one point. It does not examine packets. That's, there's no packets. It has nothing to do with packets. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. How, how many, the question was, how many proxies? Um, that is a question we don't know the answer to. <laughs> you, you don't worry about it right now. There's, and we don't have knobs for that in bro control. You basically just say, my cluster is this manager this proxy and these five workers, or this manager, the, these two proxies, and these five workers, and bro control establishes all of the connections for you. Um, I, I don't know if at some point we may add more knobs for, for tuning that on how things work or, or something. There's, yeah, there aren't really any. That's okay. the thing. Um, <laughs> The, the, the big thing, though, and this is where I've gotten most questions. It does not look at packets. It only is synchronizing variables. So you've all worked with variables in Bro now, and it really is just involved with sending this data around. Oh, and, and events. I, I'm, no, not events. No. It's, I've actually extended it a little bit. It does that a little bit now. Oh, sorry, no, not the proxy. The, the proxy can send events and receive events from other things, which you didn't used to be able to do. Yeah. form of that question is there an answer to how do you tell if you don't have enough proxies so is there how do you identify the um, bottleneck in broccoli whatever communication I hope honestly that that no one runs into this I've things have been tuned a lot to reduce the amount of synchronization and partly <sighs> there's this script called scan.bro <laughs> I feel like it's a story I should tell but so Seth um it, it, well, well, sorry, go ahead. We, we're up to eight proxies now. We have 32 workers. Yes, they're the and, ones uh, you should talk Our to. manager went up to 100%, so we added more proxies. The CPU usage went down. I don't know. If it, it's kind of one of those things. If you see crashes where the proxy is crashing or something's crashing, you may try adding another proxy or two and just <laughs> see. It, it's, it's hard because, uh, <laughs> I mean, really, you know, there's, there's places that have 10, 12 machines with dozens or, or, or even over 100 processes all talking to each other. That is so hard to monitor. I mean, how many other tools are people actually doing this with? I mean, I've heard of these like large Hadoop clusters and stuff, 
But I, I don't hear of many cases where there were, you know, some security team is just running this thing and they have dozens or hundreds of processes all talking to each other. It's incredibly hard to, to really dig down deep enough to find out what's going on there. But um, yeah, it, I, we would love to get more experience figuring that out. And personally, I would like to auto-tune it where it can just figure out the right thing. But I, that's probably one of those research problems that you can't actually solve. <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of their tasks are a lot more bounded though because they're sort of working with this data set and they have input output data set. We have like this big mess of data and people writing their own scripts and it, it's it's really really complicated. But generally though, from an operational perspective, like Mike was saying, you sort of are like mm, things are failing. Let's add a proxy. You can just sort of play with it and test. And that was what I did at OSU a lot was just sort of test. And Robin. When he was implementing Cluster Shell, had never tested more than one. He said, I think it'll work. And we were running, at that point, we'd already been running for three months with three proxies. <laughs> it turns out it worked. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, it, unfortunately, that's one of the places we don't have a lot of experience with yet. I mean, even running it, it you know, we're running it operationally places. And it's just, I don't know if we found sort of the lesson to that yet. But when we do, we're watching for it. <laughs> uh, so the worker is sort of the really important part. And this is where you'll have the dozens of processes. They're the ones sniffing traffic, performing protocol analysis. It's really what you can think of Bro doing. The other stuff is just in support of the workers. Um, so anyway, that, like, all the stuff you guys have been doing is really like worker tasks for the most part. And then the front end is not a bro process. It, it is something else. And that's the complicated part that everyone has questions about. And, and I imagine there are going to be questions about that at the end because it's so complicated. It's essentially what it's doing, though, is bidirectional flow load balancing. So you need to have both sides of a conversation end up on one process. Um, turns this large pipe into many little sessions of chess. Many, sorry, many little streams of sessions. So a session is, you know, well, this IP address, talk to this IP address. Those obviously need to go to the same one, because if you're not looking at both sides, how do you tie a request to a response in HTTP? How do you tie, you, you can't tie anything together. If one worker sees something, the other worker sees something. That kind of communication in Bro does not happen, because it wouldn't even make sense. It makes sense to just send conversations to, to individual workers. Um, the most commonly is four or five tuple load balancing. Personally, I like two tuple. <laughs> it, it turns out that um, if you have a large number of hosts, even though the cluster, I think in the cluster paper, it indicated that two tuple had some issues with hot spotting where it sent too much traffic to, uh, to, one, to one process. Um, in practice, with extremely large numbers of hosts, and the more hosts you have communicating, the better the load balancing is typically with, with this approach. Um, two tuple seems to work out well, actually. And you, you avoid some problems with four and five tuple. Like FTP, for instance. If you do four tuple, it's saying any conversation between two, sort, two IP addresses and these two ports on those IP addresses will go to the same process. Whereas two tuple will say, any conversation between these two IP addresses goes to the same. So things like um, FTP get really screwed up with 4 tuple and 5 tuple. And we don't have a good solution for that yet. It works fine if you do 2 tuple. It's not a problem. The FTP thing gets done, files are analyzed, no problem. But it's a really hard problem the other way. And we haven't, I, I've tried with 2.0, I tried to figure out a way to do it, and I couldn't do it because you can't communicate fast enough that there's about to be this port open. Um, there's actually, I have a ticket filed with PFRing. I talked to Luca about it. The, the way, they're, the, what, they're, what PFRing is doing right now is actually broken on some networks, like get NCSA, for instance. Um, they, do, they do six tuple load balancing, which includes the VLAN, and, you know, which, which isn't really proper because that's not really part of the, the conversation in most cases. Um, the, with the VLAN, uh, you know, outbound traffic is on one VLAN, inbound is on a different VLAN. You're, Traffic is all messed up if you do six tuple. I'm hoping that the way they implement it is 
maybe like default to four tuple, but you can optionally select two, four, five, six if you really want it. So I'm, I'm hoping that they get that done soon. But there is a ticket filed, and Luke is aware of it. Didn't you patch it um, to do two tuple, Seth? But you're, well, you're not using PF ring here anymore. But yeah, we, for, for a while, I did just modify it. It was an easy modification to make it do two tuple. Let me clar clarify one thing. So, so the workers do communicate. So in general, four tuple is not a problem. Um, because the, the one worker could send the information over to the other worker, and then, then it knows about it. For FTP, the problem is that um, the latency is too, too high for that. So we don't get the information quickly enough to the other worker, because the, the data connection is usually coming like immediately. Hey, I actually thought of something I'm going to have to talk to you about later. I think I know a way to solve that. I just, when I was talking about it, I thought about it. So I think we just need to add something to Bro, but I think we can fix that. Good. Um, so anyway, you come down to the fact that it's nice to talk about it at the high level and whatever, but then you come to the operational deployment issue, and it's a pain in the butt. Uh, you have network-based load balancing and host-based load balancing. Finally, there are tools be starting to be available for host-based load balancing well, and network-based. They're, they're really, the, the tools for doing this haven't really been available. Um, so here you can actually see what this, what this sort of represents is a, 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 a network base load balancer. So what it is, is I guess you could essentially think of each place that says worker is a process. It could be one physical host. It could be three physical hosts. Um, and that's the thing. Once you get below the front end, all the, the worker, proxy, and manager bro processes, they could be on one machine. They could be on 10 machines. They could be on 20 machines. But they could be on all, all those processes on one machine. And I know there are people in here that are actually doing this, where they do run all of these on one machine. The front end, there, there's, um, there are solutions where you can do this in sort of these network hardware things, where it'll take your traffic and it'll do layer. Well, in one case, there's a product that does layer two load balancing, where it will actually do that um, tuple hashing in the hardware, and then it will rewrite the destination MAC address, and it'll output it. So you can put it to the output traffic to a standard switch, and the you know, you statically assign those MAC addresses on the ports on the switch, and the traffic just flows to them. There are other ones where they'll do things like uh, it doesn't do the layer two load balancing. It sort of like does layer one load balancing, where the traffic goes in, and you get, you know, all these one gig ports or all these ten gig ports that have um, a, a chunk of the traffic, but it's not actually load balanced at layer two. The, the MAC addresses haven't changed and things like that. So there are options there. For the workers, you have things like PF Ring, which does clustering. And we actually support this out of the box now. If you build against the libpcap wrapper for PF Ring, Bro Control just turns all the right knobs to make the clustering work. So you would say, worker one, worker two, you are on the same host, you sniff the same interface. And Bro Control will just do things correctly so it'll load bounce across them. Um, and you could run into problems currently because of the six tuple load balancing. But if anyone needs help with that, it's not hard to change that and fix it, I think, even though I've been hearing now there may be some other problem. I'm not sure. Actually, we have a whole talk on the, the front end, too. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess I should move on from that. So the front end splits your traffic up. Um, sorry. I've been so involved with that for so long, it's hard to get that out of my head. Uh, so bro control is really the thing where you sort of specify what your cluster looks like. You go into bro control, and there's this broken, uh, sorry, node.cfg in your Etsy directory. Um, you basically are specifying into that. I mean, in, in some sort of grander scheme, you're almost specifying into it how your traffic is split up. I mean, you're saying, you know, I've got these. I've got one part of my my traffic on this host, and it's on this interface. I've got another part on this host, on this interface. I've got another part on this host, on this interface. And you do that, and then Bro Control. That's like enough for Bro Control to go out to all of these boxes and start up processes, sniffing the right interfaces, or just just kind of doing things right. I mean, that's sort of the the whole goal of it. But it's just the idea of this easy management of an enormous number of processes. I mean. I can't imagine having to manually go and start up some of these clusters that have 40 workers and multiple proxies and a manager. I mean, I, I can't imagine having to configure that manually and start it up manually. It would, it would be awful. 
So I wanted to show really quickly like the difference in, in node.cfg. So here is like the default thing you get just straight out of the box. You get this standalone configuration, which is really the, the concept, I guess, of the worker, the manager, the proxies, all in actually one process. And it's sort of the, the old, the traditional, normal way of bro. Then you have this um, thing where you start to have these specialized bro processes, and that's the difference. You now say, this is, an implicit man uh, this is implicitly a cluster because you've configured it like a cluster. You didn't have to say, you guys act like a cluster because you're not running any standalone nodes anymore. So the question was about multiple interfaces per node. That probably will come because we will we I don't there's no concrete details on this yet, but we um, we are hoping to address the packet input issue. So it, well, we're not going to disable that. All right. <laughs> we're not going to deliberately say no, you cannot do that because it does doing the hack. <laughs> does break some stuff, but it also makes things work. <laughs> uh, it breaks things like cap stats, because every time you run uh, bro control cron to, to do all the cron tasks, like clean things up or, or you know, restart any dead nodes, um, it, it actually breaks that. And it, so it can't measure the traffic, because you can't pass that same sort of thing to cap stats. I'm not totally sure how we're going to fix it yet, but we've yeah, yeah, most functionality works. It breaks small things that most people don't pay much attention to. So generally, the hack works. <laughs> I just wanted to make Yeah. So th this is really you know, a uh, multi-worker configuration. It's the full thing. Like, you're done at this point. You actually just go into bro control then, and you can see uh, that's bro control. I mean, there's sort of, you do check. It says everything's OK. You do install. It, it shows this. It, it gener what this actually does is it generates a few files, copies files around. One thing I should point out, because I think a lot of people didn't realize this, to add a new worker, for instance, into your cluster, you'll put the box down, you'll install the operating system on it. And right now, it seems to be you pretty much need the same operating system <laughs> as, as like across the board. Uh, you type install. You don't have to install bro on the worker. Bro just creates the directory structure, copies everything out, you're done. You don't, that's, that's it. So actually installing a new one is configuring the operating system and typing install. And it does the, it will modify your nodes.cfg and then install, and it pushes it out. Um, so that's pretty much it. It basically just generates some, some Bro scripts that you can actually, if you look in the right spot, you can actually find them and look at those. But it, it just modifies a few options and things in Bro to make it the cluster. and. It does this uh, cluster layout, which actually describes, you know, here's where this worker is, and it, it basically does that so that when the cluster, when the cluster stuff starts up, everything can connect to each other appropriately. Oh, it, it's using SSH. That's, I guess I should say that. Yeah, it uses SSH in the background to copy things, and it'll use rsync over SSH to rsync like the binary around and everything. So. That that is true. When I, I yeah. So well, I, I want to say it for the, the video. The oh, okay. when you um you do need to configure it so that whatever user you're running bro as, and unfortunately for 2.0, we didn't get the privilege dropping code in that we were planning on doing. Um, so whatever your user you're running bro as needs to be able to log in to all the other uh, hosts in your cluster with SSH with no password. So so key based authentication. Um, hopefully, your workers trust your manager. Hey? <laughs> because if they don't, they do, actually. Um, so anyway, start. I mean, this is like, you know, start is the same thing that you do. Like, that command, if you're on standalone one process, exact same thing that the, at NCSA they do when they're going to start up their 40 worker cluster. It's the same thing. You just have more output after it. And things start up and talk to each other. Almost always exactly right. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to kind of show really quickly. I think this is the last slide. Uh, there's a lot of commands in Bro Control. It's, it's got these things that can sort of do introspection. Uh, there's a print command. If you want to see the value of some variable at runtime, that could be a set or a table. And I, I think there's some issue there still we're trying to figure out. But 
it, it works frequently <laughs> on, in many cases, especially on smaller variables that aren't like enormous tables or sets. Yeah, it's, it seems to not work on really huge sets and tables, but it, it will print tables and sets. Um, but it, it's cool. It's, it's introspection. You can look at what Bro is thinking while it's running and, and what it knows. Uh, this is another cool feature, update. You can actually modify scripts. So wherever you're doing like redef or something, if you change that, you type check, install, update, and it just changes the values. And I've actually done this a number of times. like. Uh, at NCSA, for instance, it was one time I realized I was like, I actually want to have Bro log all the software for for every host and not just for local hosts. So I changed it, check, install, update, and suddenly the log changed and it started logging all the software for remote hosts. So it was, I mean, it was cool. And then I was like done with that, so I changed it back to local host, check, update, install, and or check, install, update, and it stopped logging the stuff. It was really cool and no restart. No, no, no. They, they continue running. And this, this feature has always been there, but it was broken for a long time. But it is it works now. I made sure it worked, because it always made me mad that it didn't work. So, Seth, do you have any sort of general hardening recommendations? I mean, uh, do you usually see clusters deployed on a private network, and you just statically configure the IPs and, and host names, yeah. or uh, just gen access to the manager, or what? I knew there were parts I would leave out. Generally, in terms of practical deployment issues, the way I always recommend it and the way I've done it places is the manager will sort of cross the boundary and it will have access out and then access into this private network. So you'll use like 10 dot address space or one of the RFC 1918 address spaces. Um, and it's on a separate VLAN. So the manager will tend to have like two interfaces. The manager will also, in, in the cases that I've set up the whole thing, It'll run a DNS server, so all my workers may have you know, DNS names. It'll run a time server, so it's because you really want to make sure your time is synchronized across all your workers, because your logs will be really confusing if it's not. Um, uh, and, and that's really about it. The workers, it's nice for them to be able to do DNS lookups. On the other side, you know, that could be construed as something you don't want them to do. So that's, that's why you really put them on that separate network. You don't provide, uh, that's the other thing, I guess, is I do not make the manager forward packets. It, it doesn't provide a gateway at all. It's just a thing there. The only thing it'll do for the workers is time synchronization and DNS. Um, So yeah, I mean, that's, that's generally the approach. I, I guess maybe in our documentation, we'll start addressing those sort of deployment issues. But on the other hand, everyone has slight modifications to that, that general idea. Um, so going back to the time thing, it's really interesting. If you've got 10 or more physical hosts, there is that exec command. It's interesting to do exec date. Because what it'll do is run date across all, across all of your uh, workers. And if you get this, and it runs it in parallel. So you get the, it, they all run at the same time. And you're looking to make sure it's on, they're all on the same second, just to like double, double check your, your time across, the, uh, across your cluster. Because it's, it's, it's not fun to have a cluster that's five minutes off, or even worse, an hour off, because your logs will actually show. You know, you'll have these logs, and they're all OK. And there'll be one log line that's like hours off, and then it'll go back. And it's because each worker is attaching those timestamps. That's not done by the manager. So you really want to make sure your workers all have the same time. There are also things like top. If you want to run top across all of your, uh, your whole cluster, you can see what the CPU utilization is and memory utilization. There, there's a lot of other things in here, too. Um, I, that's kind of the big things. There's, but like restart, start, stop, kind, kind of stuff you would expect. Uh, status, if you want to see if everything's actually running. Uh, of course, start will tell you that, too. Because um, start won't start something up, obviously. It's already running. Uh, there's also this new plugin interface to Bro, where you can actually have these plugins that sort of inject new commands into Bro control. So. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be extending the plugin interface a lot and adding a lot of new things to it and finally writing plugins for it. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything. Were there more questions about operational deployments? I could 
Is there more time? OK. All right. Well, um, to feel free to come up and talk to me later if you have sort of operational deployment issues. I've done several cluster deployments, and I've learned things and learned things not to do and to do. So, all right. <laughs>